I put it in the. Uh, you already put it in the digital market revolution group. Uh, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. <laughs> they just gonna light it up. Right. Who else do we have on? If you can hear and see me, please drop a comment. I do see some people hopping on. If you can hear and see me, please drop a comment. <clears throat> If you can hear and see me, please drop a comment. I see you on, Ms. Yolanda. Appreciate the love, Cherie. If you can hear and see me, please drop a comment. If you're tuning in, that way I can know you're tuning in. Because how this live stream thing goes is just because it's showing somebody looking at your stream, that can just be them going down the news feed. I don't mean to actually tune in. So I like to know who's tuned in, who's ready to make 2019 their best year yet. Yolanda says, happy winning Wednesday. Happy winning Wednesday to you as well. Happy New Year as well. Happy New Year as well. Happy winning Wednesday to you as well. Also, feel free to share this live stream around with anyone else you feel to benefit from this information. I'm going to be talking about what are you optimizing for in 2019. We see you. Okay, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Shia. Want to make sure I'm saying your name right. Make sure I'm saying your name right. Shia. But yeah, we're going to get this live going over these next couple of minutes. Give some more people a chance to hop on. For you all that's hopping on, that is showing some love. I definitely appreciate it. We got a room full over here at the Rise of the 1% headquarters, by the way. It's not just me in here today. So I'm even more pumped up and excited. Welcome, Rashida. Happy New Year to you all that's hopping on and actually tuning in. Happy New Year to you. And what I'm going to be talking about in this live stream today is what are you optimizing for in 2019? Are you looking to better your terms in terms of spirituality? Are you looking to better your relationships? Are you looking to better your health? Are you looking to better your finances this year? For some of you all that actually own businesses, are you looking to scale your business to the next level this year? What type of goals do you have this year? What are you looking to accomplish? Because at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure we can all agree, being it's a new year, a lot of people say, New year, new me. I know we all hear that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, I'm a person that's more action-oriented. So I always like to speak on the specific actions of what are the things that are going to take place in the 2019 year to be able to make this your best year yet. Not just saying it. I've never been a hype person on New Year's resolutions. I'm pretty sure some of you all see me write that up in my post. When I put my post up on social media, I'm not the hypey New Year's resolution type of person. Matter of fact, I really don't even believe in New Year's resolutions. I just believe whenever someone is ready to make a change in their life, it can be at the beginning of the year, the middle of the year, the end of the year, and they make their mind up to make that change, they make the choice and the decision to do that, they can do it. But it is the top of the year. So if 2018 you don't feel was your best year, 2017 or 2016, you got a brand new start. Happy New Year to everybody. Shia says, wow, you got a unique name. Sahia. Say it again, Antonio. Sahia. Sahia. Antonio can pronounce it better than me over here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate the help. No problem at all. And thank you all for the love. Thank you all for the love. 
So yes, Happy New Year to everybody. This is Gerald Bass, creator and founder with the Rise of the One Percent. Happy New Year, Charlotte. Rise of the One Percent member. Tuning in. Yes, I'm pumped up. I'm excited. Yes, I'm excited about the new year. I'm excited because it's first quarter. I'm excited about a lot of different things. But definitely, like I say, happy new year, you, you, year, you all. <laughs> and this is Gerald Bass, once again, creative founder with the rise of the 1%. I'm signing on tonight at the rise of the 1% headquarters. I got my guy, Mr. Antonio Millhouse. He's over here at the Rise headquarters right now. Hey. Social media director of the Rise of the 1%, Instagram marketing strategist, and has his own Instagram agency, Millhouse Marketing Agency, as well. He's in the building. And I'm going to introduce a couple other people real quick. I'm just going to let them say hello to y'all. <laughs> and then I'm going to get into the content. My man, Mr. Calvin Lunsford, you can come over just one second. Just say what's up to the people. Just real quick. This is my man, Mr. Calvin Lunsford, Mr. Custom Print. Yes. And he's also on board the Rise Now website designer doing some great things. I'm excited to have him in the building. And then my sis over there, Ms. Janet Thomas, is in the building as well. Yeah, crushing man. it right now. Commercial real estate. Hi. What's up, world? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. In the building. What's going on, Veronica? So, yeah, today, like I said, what we wanted to talk about in this live stream, I'm not going to be very long, but I'm going to tell you all one of the things I'm looking to do in 2019, and you all can hold me accountable for it. I am looking to provide as much value to you all as possible in this year. So I know in 2018, we wasn't putting out as much content as a company as we have in the previous years. And so I am dedicated and I'm determined to put out as much value to the marketplace this year, 2019, okay? So you all can have my word. So you're gonna see me doing a lot more live streams, put out a lot more content, and not even just hearing from me, but hearing from some of my friends, and from some of my business partners, some of my team, some of my mentors, like you'll get to hear from a lot of these different people. Okay, so we want to hear, see a lot of people become successful in different areas of their life. Now, one thing I do want to let you all know is that all my content will not be around marketing and advertisement. That's the, another thing. I know last year we put out a lot of content specifically just talking about marketing and advertisement different strategies to generate leads, get customers and clients for your business, which is we're still doing that. We still have a digital marketing agency. We still have coaching and training programs for that. But I don't want to just speak all marketing and advertising this year. I also want to talk about things that can assist you with just bettering your life as a whole, not necessarily just marketing and advertisement. Okay? Because at the end of the day, if we don't necessarily have the right mindset, around a lot of things, then the, the business things are not gonna to come together anyway, okay? So with that being said, that's what I wanna share with you all. So that's why this first live stream of 2019 tonight is called, What Are You Optimizing For In 2019? And what I mean by that is, okay, a lot of us say we may want different things to change for us in our life this year. Right, like I said, maybe 2018 in certain areas of your life you may feel wasn't the best, or 2017, 16, or whatever year it may have been. And this year you want it to be different. You want to see shifts. You want to see uh, different changes happen in your life. Okay, so this is a thing that I recommend because this is something that I've done. This is something that I get many of my clients to do as well at the top of the years. I'm going to be getting on calls with them over this next week is let's talk about specifically some of the areas in your life where you may want to see change in 2019. Like I say, maybe that's you getting more intact on the spiritual side of things when it comes to your life. Whoever you may pray to, I'm a firm believer in there is a high power. And I can tell you all this, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't get my spirituality intact some years ago. And I'm not going to say my whole life I've been 
very spiritually inclined. I'm not going to say that. Uh, but what I will say is some years ago, even going throughout uh, my business career when I was like in network marketing and stuff like that, I got very um, uh, more spiritually inclined with the source and, and the higher power. And so uh, for you, that may be something that you may be looking to do this year in 2019. Now, here's the thing. You can say you want to do that, but how are you going to do that? Okay, that's something that I would recommend you do, right? For instance, for the faith that I believe in, you know, it could be attending church service more. It can be uh, studying the word more. It can be attending Bible studies. It could be getting involved with the ministry or getting involved with different parts of the church because that's, like I said, the faith that I believe in, okay? So you have to just think on your end, like, what are some things you can do if, if that's an area of your life that you may be looking to optimize and change in this year, okay? So that's just one example. I'm just giving you an example. Another example could be, okay, I want to better my relationships, right? I may want to better my relationships uh, with my family, or I may want to uh, better my relationships with my children this year, or whatever the case may be, okay? It's good that we've gotten clear on that you want to better your relationships this year, Well, how do you plan on doing that? Maybe you're going to spend more time with your kids this year. Maybe you're going to spend more time with your family this year. You know, I know at times we get caught up in our work. We get caught up in trying to accomplish different things, and sometimes we put that on the, on the back burner. Well, this year you may say, well, at specific times throughout the month, I'm going to dedicate to taking my family out, doing these different family outings. Or once a quarter we may go on a vacation or something like that. But get very specific about it and look at your calendar for 2019 and plot it out. Okay, plot it out. For instance, um, one of my mentors, I know he actually takes his family because uh, he has kids. I don't have kids at this time, but he has kids. And pretty much uh, every quarter they plan a family vacation, right? And they put it on the calendar, right? For every quarter, the, the specific week uh, of, of, of that quarter and month that they're going to do the family vacation, right? Or you may say uh, on weekends, Right, depending on where you are in your journey right now with your career and business, you may say, I'm not going to work on Saturdays and Sundays. I'm going to dedicate that just to spend with family, or I'm not going to work on Sundays. I know one thing I didn't do in 2018 is I didn't work on a whole lot of Sundays last year. Um, now, this year, that may change for me because um, I have some big goals this year um, myself. So I, I, I am going to be putting in some time on, on quite a bit of Sundays this year. It won't be every Sunday. Um, but you just have to think about what you're looking to accomplish and, um, you know, what's the end goal, what's the end result, and how can you optimize to get the best out of that specific result. So, like, last year for me, like I say, I didn't work on every single Sunday because some Sundays I went to go spend with my parents and uh, my immediate family. And I pretty much just worked Monday through Saturday, right, because I wanted to give more time to my immediate family. And that's what I did. So that's what I just would like recommend that you all do um, if it's your relationships. And if you get any value out of this so far, please show me some love, hit some hearts, some likes, so I can know that you all are getting something out of this and I'm not just rambling. If, you are, if you're getting something out of this, please show me some love, show me some hearts. Okay, so like I said, that those are the first two areas I talked about were uh, spirituality and relationships. Okay, so if you, like I said, if you want to optimize to better those parts of your life, what are the specific actions that you're going to take? And I just gave you all some examples of what I'm talking about. Okay, I just gave you all some examples of what I'm talking about. Now, for instance, when it comes to uh, let's say your health this year. Let's say you want to have uh, better health this year, right? Well, a lot of times, a lot of people say they want to have uh, better health, but once again, don't have a specific action plan. So, like, if you want to have better health this year, um, what are some things you're going to do or some steps you're going to have to take to have better health? Is that going to be eating better? Is that going to be working out? 
right? Which is seriously one thing that I've discovered that's helped me better my health over these last years is those the, those are the two main things. So for some of you all that say you want to have better health, maybe you've been in and out of the hospital last year, things of that nature, and you may say, I want to have like better health. Those are two of the main things. I mean, it's so many uh, distractions they have out here with all these different diets and all this kind of stuff and supplements and uh, fit, big things. What the fit, big thing? And well, your wrist now, and you got to have certain running shoes. It's just crazy. You don't even really need to have all that. Really, if you want to have better health, I'm telling you the two things you need to do. And even outside of those two things, one more thing I'm going to give you. You need to eat better, right? You may want to eat healthier and you want to work out and be very consistent throughout the year. And another thing, and this is something that I want to work on in 2019 myself. You got to have more sleep. That's, those, that, that's how you have better health. Okay? Did, did anybody just learn some? Drop me a comment, please. Did, did y'all just learn something there? Did, anybody get any ahas right there? That's all you need. Forget all the other stuff that's out there. No offense to all the people selling the health supplements and the Fitbit watches and all this other stuff. No offense to them. Not hating on their business. I'm just saying that's what I've discovered when it comes to like better health. Not just for me, but for other people as well. I know that are extremely healthy. That's all they're focused on. Workout, eating good, and better quality of sleep. And staying hydrated, drinking water. That's it. I mean, all that other stuff you throw out the window pretty much. Charlotte says, I need to work on my sleeping habits. Okay. I appreciate you sharing that, Charlotte. We're going to work on that together because I need to work on that too. <laughs> I've had some bad sleeping habits over the years. I've never been real good on that end, but we're going to work on it. We're going to work on it. And the more sleep you get as well, a lot of times, the more productive you are, you know, the next day. Okay, the more sleep you have. You're not all sluggish and stuff like that, so you're able to accomplish more. Yolanda says, ah, hi, mom. It's bad. Charlotte says, it's bad. How bad is it, Charlotte? Are you sleeping at all? <laughs> Are you with the no sleep movement? Are you sleeping at all, sister? <laughs> And one thing that I'm looking to do, and I'll share this with you all, it may help somebody on here, is I'm looking to be a little bit more consistent on the times that I go to sleep at night and the times that I wake up every morning, which is um, what I was very consistent with, like back in 2014, 15, 16, 17, I got a little off track, and last year I wasn't on track as well with going to sleep around the same time, waking up at the same time every day. Sometimes, yeah, you're working on different projects and you'll go a little longer. Um, but we're going to work on that this year. Yes, Charlotte say no sleep game. <laughs> no, Charlotte didn't say no sleep game. And Charlotte saying yes. Yes to you are getting some sleep, Charlotte, or you're part of no sleep game? But, yeah, that's what I would definitely recommend for you all that want better health in 2019. I know a lot of y'all that follow me on social media, you see at times I'm posting, I'm in the gym. I do that for inspiration. I don't do that to brag. Believe me, I don't even like working out, to be honest. I'm not, uh, I don't like working out at all. I really don't. I dread doing it every morning. Some people may think I love workout. I really don't. I do not love to work out. I just do it because I know I know the impact it's going to have on my body and my health. That's why I do it. I don't like to work out. I'm not an advocate of working out. And I'm also looking to get me a personal trainer this year sometime as well. Because it's, it's just something else with having someone else alongside of you while you're working out. Um, first of all, somebody that has experience, they, they, they do this, right? Uh, and then not only that, for accountability. <clears throat> See, say he got a homie on bank head that's going to get me right with the personal train. <laughs> Hope my boy C can point me in the right direction. AJ say, me either, bro. Ha ha. I'm telling you. 
And there's a lot of people like that that work out consistently. They don't necessarily like it. They just do it because they know the effect it's going to have on their body and their health. So it's not about liking it. Sometimes in life, we have to do things we don't like. So, no, I don't like running two miles every morning, but I do. I run two miles pretty much five days out of the week. I run a minimum of two miles a day. And I don't just do running. You know, I do upper body work, leg work on certain days as well. But every single day, five days, I run two miles. Do I like it? No, I don't. Especially after we just came off the holiday. You know, we had some cheap meals and stuff. Yeah, it was a hard workout this morning, right? <laughs> I'm going to be real with you. But, hey, you got to do what you got to do. So AJ says, I'm up to 203 pounds, bruh. Sheesh, I need to be in there with you. Hey, man, hit me up. I'm always looking out for workout partners. I work out pretty early. I'm just letting you know that as well. But I definitely always looking for workout partners, man. And I don't know if 203 is a bad thing for you. That's another thing. That's why I say it's good to have a personal trainer. I mean, it could be a good thing, could be a bad thing in terms of your weight. I, I'm not necessarily a personal trainer, so I couldn't tell you that. But it's good to have one because they can help you on that end. All right, so the last thing I'm going to share with you all, I know we talked about if you're going to optimize for spirituality, if you're going to optimize for relationships, better relationships, if you're going to optimize for better health. Okay, some of you all want to optimize for finances. And I know most of you all are business owners that's on here, right? You want to have better finances. Uh, in 2019 and you may have had over these uh, previous years. There's a lot of different ways I could come at talking about finances, uh, and that's kind of dependent upon the type of situation you may be in at this particular time. Um, but one thing I would say that helped me with transitioning my income a couple of years ago, because for some of y'all that know my story, just a few years ago, I was sleeping on a futon at my mom dude's house. And literally within a very short period of time, I was able to go from there to change my entire lifestyle. And what I would share with you all that helped me with changing everything. Um, for one, I would say this. What I've been sharing with you all this live screen, I got very specific on what I really wanted going into the year of 2016. That was the year we actually launched the Rise of 1%. And I got very specific on my goals and what I really wanted. Once I got very specific on my goals and what I really wanted, then I put together a strategic action plan on how we were going to accomplish it within a very short period of time. Now, for the business model that I'm involved in, of course, um, we're a digital marketing agency, so we help different business owners with customer client acquisition on the internet. Um, but I don't really think it matters the type of business you have at this time. If you have a business, you have to put together some strategic action plan on how you're going to accomplish whatever specific goals that you set out for this year, especially for a financial space. So, for instance, what I mean by specific, how many customers or clients are you need are you going to need to bring on board? per month uh, for your particular business model that you're uh, building it, okay? And then once you can identify how many customers and clients you're gonna need per month, okay, to hit whatever income goals that you may be setting out for, okay, you work backwards and say, okay, well, how many uh, people am I gonna have to get in front of my product or service uh, every single day, every single week, every single month? You know, how many exposures am I ever going to get to my product or service? How many offers am I going to have to make on a day-to-day -day basis to be able to hit my goal of landing X amount of customers and clients every single month? See, most business owners don't do that. And they're not very uh, specific. They kind of just get up and just go at it every day. But um, this is some of the things that I did that caused that transition in my lifestyle. I got very specific on, okay, how many clients do we want to need? this month to hit this particular income goal. Okay, now we know how many clients we need. How many leads are we gonna to have to generate every single day? And then based off those leads we generate every single day, you know, how many customers or clients we're gonna to have to bring on board. And we map this out over an entire month. And not only an entire month, month after month and for the entire year. 
And so that's something that I would definitely uh, recommend. Another thing I would recommend in 2019, if you want to optimize for better finances, is watch what you're spending your money on. That's another thing. I mean, a lot of people uh, make their money, and as soon as they make their money, their check is already spent. You know, they want to go out and party every single weekend. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with enjoying yourself from time to time, uh, but some people just party too much, and they spend too much of their money going out, partying, and drinking, and, and doing things of that nature. Like I say, I'm not saying I'm a saint on here or anything like that, and we don't have fun from time to time. We do, but we do it in moderation. A lot of people overboard on type of things. You know, if you want to have better finances, you can't spend every dollar that you're making. So you're going to have to save more money and not just save to save money, save to invest. Somebody need to catch that. Save to invest. I'm going to knock on wood. None of us can take a dime with us, okay, when, when, when it's time for us to, to transition on from here. So with that being said, just leaving money in the bank. And then not only that, not only that, of course, we already know, and this is a whole other discussion in itself, you're not really earning a whole lot of your money just sitting in the traditional bank anyway. So with that being said, you don't save to save. You save to invest in vehicles that can continue to work your money and grow your money. So that's another thing. And I know for some of y'all, this may seem real general and it may seem a little cliche, but I'm just sharing with you all what I know I've done to better my financial situation over these last up years to many of my friends who I've seen better their financial situations as well. And one thing one of my mentors shared with me is that success principles are easy to find and they're hard to follow. So at the end of the day, you all may say, well, Gerald, we've heard this before, saving the best. Everybody says that. Okay, well, you've heard it, but how many of you all have done it, okay, and done it consistently? Okay, so that's what you want to keep in mind. Makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah, I saw you. See, talking about that on your stories. The C was going to give us a gas. I think my boy C. <laughs> Charlotte says, any suggestions on building teams? Okay, are you referring to uh, a team? Because you're in network marketing, Charlotte. So you're talking about in your network marketing business? Any suggestions on building a team in your network marketing business? Is that your question? And I hope y'all got some value out of that. I know I've been on here for a while. We're going to get off in a few seconds. Um, I appreciate you all that been on here. And uh, like I say, you know, hopefully y'all getting a lot out of it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely give you suggestions on that. So when it comes to Building a team in the network marketing industry, it all goes back to what I was just saying. And what I mean by that is, okay, if you're going to build your team in your network marketing business, you want to set a goal for, like, for instance, this is January. You want to set a goal this month. How many people are you going to bring on board? You're going to get enrolled on your team. You want to set a specific goal. And keep this in mind, network marketing. Your team is only going to do as you do, not as you say. So, well, a lot of people mess up in network marketing, too, is they'll recruit a few people and then they start managing people. And network marketing, you have to continuously keep onboarding and enrolling new people um, into that particular business model um, if you really want to grow something big. So some people are like, I've done strategy session calls with network marketers before, and I'll be asking them about their numbers when it comes to them hearing their different income goals. And they'll say, well, I got to recruit 10, and then this person got to go out and do this, and that person got to go out and do that. Well, that's not how I became a top producer in the network marketing industry, and even several of my leaders, um, which is some of them over here right now, that's not how any of us became top producers when we was in that industry, uh, waiting on other people to sign people up. Uh, you have to go out and lead by example. So with that being said, you should always be in what they call phase one, looking for new partners, looking for new customers. So with that being said, you set a goal, specific goal, how many people you want to join your team for the month. And then from there, you also need to know your closing ratio in network market, which is a lot of people don't know. Usually when you are new to the industry or you have not signed up that many people, usually for every 10 people that you expose to the business, you'll get three interested, one out of money. That's normally the closing ratio for a newer networker. Now, for people that have been in a season, have large teams, 
uh, their closing ratio could be higher than that. But normally, if you're new and you have not signed up as many people, normally, out of every 10, three will be interested, one will be ready to get started. And so with that being said, based off your goal of how many new people you want to join your team for the month, then you will need to do the numbers of how many people are you going to need to expose for the month to actually get those people onto your team. And then what you're doing to get those people on your team, of course, you have to teach your team to go out and do the same thing. And that's where the duplication falls. And that's how you build a team in the network marketing industry. Um, a couple of bonus tips I throw in there. Charlotte Rising 1% member uh, I throw in there as well is uh, you want to create a team culture. Uh, I was actually sharing this with another lady that was in network marketing who reached out to me last week. You got to call me. Um, I was sharing her the same thing. You want to create a team culture. So for every network marketing company we were involved in, uh, we had our own team names, we had our own team brand. Um, we never just really promoted the company's name. We had our own. We had Team Golden Global. Uh, we had the Diamond Mind. Like we yeah, created, yeah. being a mastermind group, like we created our own movements, our own brand. We detached ourselves from a company name. We created our own movement and our own culture. So that's another thing. And as we continued to grow our team and our numbers got up, Charlotte, we started to have our own training calls and everything. Our own team trainers for our team, everything. Separate from what everyone else was doing. Now, in the beginning stages, you do have to be a student. So I'm not saying just jump out the gate and uh, just start doing team calls and create Facebook groups and group needs and all this stuff. I'm not saying do that in like the beginning stages. You gotta really uh, create some momentum first and have some successes first. But once you create some momentum, you have some successes, and your team is like growing like crazy, then yeah, I recommend creating your own Facebook group, creating your own group chat. I recommend, uh, like I said, creating your own team name, creating your own team brand, start hosting your own training calls eventually, and even doing your own team events. That's what I recommend. That's how you grow a big team in that industry. I hope that gave you some value. And Charlotte is laughing. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> she said, I see now. I'm telling you. Look at some of the other leaders in your company, Charlotte. I'm pretty sure you'll see the same thing. That's what they're doing. And brand yourself. Never a company. Brand yourself in your own movement. Any other questions, you all? Hope y'all got some value. I'm going to be going live a lot now. I'm going to be bringing y'all the goods. So make sure y'all tune in. If y'all got any value out of this, uh, please feel free to share this live stream around with anyone else you feel can benefit as well. Please feel free to share it around. And for some of y'all that may watch the replay, to some of y'all that's on right now, if you need any type of assistance when it comes to growing and scaling your business in 2019 and you are very serious about it, we're not looking to work with any and everybody. If you're looking to really ramp up your customer base, your client base, your sales, your profits in 2019, and you're real serious about it, and you potentially may want to work with our team or partner with us in 2019, just uh, we're going to drop a link. Uh, Antonio, if you could drop the link, geraldbass.com slash book a call. Geraldbass.com slash book a call. It's going to take you to my calendar. Uh, you schedule a day and a time to speak with myself, and you're going to fill out a short uh, five-question uh, five question application of some questions so I can know a little bit more about you and what you're looking to accomplish this year. Okay, geraldbass.com slash book a call. We're going to drop it in the comments. This is if you're serious, though. Okay, if you're not serious about making six to seven figures this year, then don't worry about scheduling a call. This is for people that want to grow business to six to seven figures. Um, Antonio, who you all saw, he's our Instagram specialist for our company. I mean, he's basically grew Instagram accounts to tens of thousands of followers on Instagram. He generates leads and customers and clients for businesses on Instagram. Okay, we have Mr. Calvin Lunch, you all met him. He's doing website design as well for our clients now and creating logos and things of that nature. And we have that on our team now. Um, we have another one of my partners. He focuses on building out lead generation systems and marketing sales funnels um, for our clients, the system of generating leads and also their email marketing. 
And then we have another guy on our team right now who actually assists uh, the different business owners we work with with building our Facebook Messenger chat box. You all know you can generate leads through Facebook Messenger now. You can bring on customers through automation through Facebook Messenger now. I have a team that specializes in that. And then we have a guy on our team that specializes in market research. Okay, so with that being said, we have a full-fledged team. So if you're serious about going to six to seven figures this year, geraldbass.com slash book a call, schedule a day and time to speak with me, and fill out the application. If you're not serious about six to seven figures, don't worry about it. Just leave the link there, and it's perfectly fine. It's cool. It's not meant for everybody to go to six to seven figures. Notice I said not making an extra four to 5000 a month. No, I'm talking about people who want to make $100,000 or more in a year. That's what we're looking to work with right this moment. When it comes to working with me directly, that's what we're looking for right now. That's what you're serious about. Are you ready to put the work in? Okay. It's not the lottery. Looking to put the work in. <laughs> you got to put the work in. Okay. You got to put the work in. And one thing about it, we've been fortunate enough to actually build uh, six-figure businesses. Okay, so you have to be learning from people that have actually done it. All right, so that's it, you all. No problem, Charlotte. There it is, Charlotte. Says it's so true. Yes. Yes. And when it comes to our marketing funnels and things of that nature, um, we're partnered with uh certain individuals within that space right now who have built like marketing funnels for businesses that's went well in the seven figures. So um with that being said, that's why I said if you're serious about six, seven figures, then book the car. If not, then that's perfectly fine as well. I hope you got some value out of it. And we got a lot more coming. Um I'm gonna be putting this on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is Gerald Bass. I have over 300 training videos on my YouTube channel of nothing but free content that I've done over the last several years. Okay, if you want to go over there, uh, check it out. Hit subscribe and you'll be notified every time I drop, drop some new content. I'm over there as well. All right, so that's that, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. I'm about to get back to my people over here and uh, we'll see you all soon. Have a great and phenomenal rest of your night on purpose. Good night.